Hey guys, Brady here, and many of you know I love flying in real life and also on Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today I wanted to give you an update on the peripherals I've been using and how I've mapped some of my buttons and just overall flying dynamics with these controls. Let's talk about some things. This is video number two on this subject and let's get to it. With my flight simulator setup, I'm trying to keep things nice and clean and minimal. We're gonna start with this honeycomb yoke because I have some things to talk about with this. This thing is, I believe, well worth the investment. The materials that were used, the switches, everything about it is very realistic all the way down to the tension. I feel like the, the tension of this yoke, the way that they've designed it, feels very much like the real thing. So for you serious simulator pilots out there, I would I highly recommend this because I think it's well worth the money. Now, I also think it will last a lifetime, I'm hoping. You'll notice there's some buttons here on the yoke, including a push to talk. So you can map that uh, to your push to talk button if you want, if you're talking to VATSIM. These switches are extremely realistic. I've noticed that some of the lights you have to go um, down and then back up. So. If you start up the airplane on the runway and everything's already on, you may have to play around with these, like click some of them off on the screen and then switch them back up. So if you're having some trouble with your honeycomb yoke, some of these switches are doing the opposite things in the simulator, you're not alone. But once you get them mapped right and figured out and once you get going with your flight, having these switches is super cool. Even just cool. listening to the sounds is satisfying. You can do the uh, ground, the right mag, the left mag, flip it this way for a start, and then come back to both mags afterward. I also really love the way that they made this mount. It goes onto the desk nice and tight, so when you're pulling on that yoke and you have a lot of tension, it's not gonna move around. Now, another th uh, tip that I have is I have my keyboard on top of it. I've noticed some other people do this as well. And then right under the keyboard, I put just a piece of paper here just to protect it from rubbing on the yoke. You can put anything there you want. This is a keyboard from MSI. It's got very fancy lights. You could change colors. There's a bunch of different settings here. I just leave it off just because I don't want it to take up any more power than it needs to, but I really like this keyboard. And that will lead me right into my computer before I talk about the joystick and the throttle I've been using. This computer, if you were to build one from scratch, just like this, I think you're gonna save maybe a couple hundred, maybe a few hundred dollars. So to have one from MSI, the Trident X, with these specs and have them build it for you and just ship it to you and have it be ready to go, I found it actually very affordable for what you're getting. So I would check out MSI's new Trident X computers. I know they have been really popular. All the lights in here you can customize, you can change all of that. Um, I typically leave the lights off. I just have them on for the video right now. Again, anything that could be taking up power, I, I just want to minimalize it. And even over here, there's some lights on the graphics card. This is the RTX 2080 Ti right there. And this computer has been performing the simulator very well. I'm sure you can imagine. It's been doing a really great job. A lot of this stuff you're gonna see down here, all this wiring and, and my lights and stuff are for live streaming. That's gonna be for a separate video. I'll talk about that. I've got the Thrustmaster pedals, which have been awesome as well. These had great reviews, so I went with them and I have not been disappointed by these Thrustmaster pedals. It's just the software that needs a lot of work when it comes to the rudder pedals and the sensitivity. Um, and I know Microsoft has, they're aware of that and they're working on that but um, a lot of times also I'll put the balls of my feet right here instead of putting my whole foot on so try planting your your heel on the ground try putting your heel actually here and then putting the balls of your feet right here instead of putting your whole foot on here and I think you'll find that that's gonna help a lot when it comes to the rudder pedal sensitivity because it's not quite like it is in real life right now um, it's been really sensitive on the simulator. Now, the other thing, if you do get a Trident X computer, it's also gonna come with this mouse. And I am not a salesman for 
MSI. They're not giving me any money for this or anything. I'm not making any money off of those sales from them. So, you know, I'm not, this is full disclosure. Like I, I'm just really impressed with this computer and the mouse and keyboard and it's been really great. And then I wanted to also talk about this joystick because I've really enjoyed using this. This has been awesome. Let's talk about some of the button mappings I have for this as well. There are a lot of buttons on here you'll see, but I don't use a lot of them. Um, I'm doing a lot of just in cockpit mouse clicking, like as if it were real life. But what I do have is over here, I have my flaps. This is gonna be a uh, flaps down one notch and flaps up one notch and then in the middle I'm ha I have my trim. I, a lot of people have been asking me about trimming the airplane, why is it so hard to trim? Um, you need, just need to get your throttle set to what you want your throttle set at and then focus on trimming it and sometimes you're just going to be hitting this button to do very minor trim movements. Um, you can map this to gear, however this was mapped to a throttle and it was really messing me up, so I disabled that. This does nothing. Nothing over here really does anything except for going to the pause menu. Um, and I do have some view changes over here. So I'll use some of these buttons to change my camera views. And then the pause menu and ATC. So that's really it for me. I, I'm not doing anything with these buttons, anything fancy other than just flying the airplane with the stick and it's been a really great one. It's got a super smooth ball fixture in here. It's like there's some grease in here, some kind of grease in here. I've been really impressed by this. It's the T.1600M FCS Thrustmaster. It's orange and black, so it's hard to miss when you're looking at them. The other thing I like about this that the other Thrustmaster stick and throttle didn't have is it's got the throttle separate from the stick. So these are two separate USB plugins. And another thing that I really like about this computer is how many inputs it has. So you'll notice like there is a USB-C on the front, two USBs below that. And then there's like seven in the back, which is crazy. All those inputs came stock. So this thing was ready to go for flight simulation with all those inputs. Another thing worth mentioning. But yeah, when it comes to my throttle, you'll also notice there are a lot of different buttons here that you can map. I mean, it's an overwhelming amount of stuff and it's great. You can do whatever you want, but I only use this for the throttle. That's just my preference. Um, everything else, again, like I said, I like to do in cockpit. These switches are great just because they're more realistic on this yoke. But when it comes to the throttle, a lot of times when your hand's on the throttle on an airplane, there's not anything else attached to it. So you're just, that's why I like it like this. And you can move it from the left side to the right side. I have it just sitting here on a chair. And I know that some people have built some stands for their throttle. I may do that, but for now I just have it on this chair. That kind of matches the desk anyway. And then I have my headphones here. These are the DT990 Pros. If you guys have read any headphone reviews, you've probably heard of the DT990 Pros. These are amazing. I use them to make all my videos. They're actually mixing headphones, but they just have incredible quality sound. They are actually not noise canceling. Um, they actually let more noise in from the outside. They let more white noise in from the room. So very interesting. But after using them for years now, I don't think I could ever go to anything else. The sound quality out of them is just unmatched. You can also hook up a speaker to your computer, of course. Um, and another thing to note is you can plug in an Xbox controller into here and use that for your drone cam. It's the best way to fly the drone around in the simulator. So something to consider. Um, I, sometimes I do hook up my Xbox controller and it just automatically works as a drone cam whenever you go into the drone view. Let's talk about the monitor. I went through a lot of different monitors and ended up with this one. This is from Samsung and I've always always liked Samsung's image quality but I was I was open to anything I was open to a lot of different things ended up going with this Samsung this is a 32 inch 4k monitor and for the price I really don't think it can be beat the one thing I needed to do was get it to a nice eye level you'll see I just I made this little shelf as a monitor stand because this monitor does not 
extend up and down. So that was a nice solution. It was not hard to make. This, this monitor is amazing. Great way to experience the simulator. I do not have a three monitor set up for my simulator just because I don't really have the room in here. And I'm, I'm also using this as a workspace. So what's great is when I'm working, I can just take that yoke off and I just put my keyboard down and now it's my workstation. So I'm not using this only for flight simulating. I spent the money on this computer that I did because I'm also using it as my work computer as well. But it is a great gaming computer. Let's hop on the simulator and talk about some other things. I also tried out the widescreen version of uh, monitors, like the really wide. Wasn't into it as much, to be honest. I don't know why, I don't know why, and I'm not really into the curved monitor thing uh, either. I have nothing against them. It's just all personal preference. So sometimes I'll like buy things and then try them out and return them. That's what's great about Amazon. If you don't like it, you're not happy with it, just return it try something else. So you might go through three or four monitors before you find the right one that you want to stick with. All right, and we've got Microsoft Flight Simulator queued up. So I'm going to start with flying a tailwheel first with this Thrustmaster stick and talk about some things to be thinking about when you're flying a tailwheel. I really like the Savage Cub and I've got this US Army library downloaded for it. And I'm gonna go to Donegal, Ireland because, because it's one of the most beautiful runways in the world and it's a hard surface runway and plenty of room to practice with some beautiful views. Uh, it's dark there now, so we'll go to daytime. And it's also very, very windy there right now. Too, too windy to fly um, a small airplane for live weather. So let's do like 11 knots of wind coming out of the southwest and that should do it while that's loading i also wanted to mention the thrustmaster throttle someone gave me a really nice tip if you push this all the way forward this particular throttle you've got a hole here that appears with a screw and that is your tension screw and if you unscrew this a little bit um, it'll make this throttle a lot more loose which in my opinion is just more realistic and smoother so that was really nice um, it was a little bit stiff before and now it's nice and smooth this thing also has some pretty good weight to it which is very nice as well all right we're ready to fly we're here in the savage cub we're just gonna start it up real quick and i'm gonna tell you a little bit about tailwheel flying and how you should treat it um, in the simulator, just some things to be thinking about. Again, very, very happy with this stick and the way that it reacts. So if you can see, as I move the stick around, you could see the stick in the airplane moving. It's, it's like almost spot on. Really nice. Let's get this thing started up, get on the runway and take off. We're gonna do throttle to slight. This airplane actually has a choke, so we're gonna pull the choke out, which is very different for me. Uh, we'll turn the mags on. I think, think that's it. Let me just start it up. Make sure that the fuel selection is... Where's the fuel selector? That's the only thing I don't know. I wonder, it might not have a fuel selector. Yeah, just start it right up. I'll go ahead and start taxiing as well. We'll turn on that landing light. Alright, so the biggest uh, difference with the tailwheels is it's a lot of footwork. Um, it's a lot of footwork with the rudder, but you're gonna have more control with the rudder and in my opinion It's a lot more rewarding when you figure out how to fly one and you just have a lot more Control and it's just it's more challenging. It's but it's also historic historic form of flying um, There's a lot of things I love about it. Oh Now that we started up we'll put the choke back in and one of the first things um, you're going to want to do on takeoff is just get that tail off the ground. So what I what I do is I actually am pushing down. If you can see the stick, I'm, I'm pushing down on the elevator um, and pitching down as we accelerate to get that tail off the ground. Because once that tail's off the ground, you're going to have a lot more control over the airplane. A lot more control with your feet. So there you go. It's off the ground. You don't need to worry about it uh, nose diving unless you really try to slam it into the ground. The airplane doesn't want to nose down, at least for the most part they don't. Um, now as we gain speed, 
we're going to start to take off. And typically, it is ailerons into the wind, so I kind of did the opposite there. And I've noticed that the wind dynamics in the simulator, as far as tailwheels go, we still have a ways to go with it for it to be like where I would like it to be. But overall, we've come a long, long way. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me about trim as well. When it comes to trimming the airplane, you really just want to get your power set to... Wow, look at how beautiful this is. <laughs> first of all, um, you really want to get your RPM set first and then focus on trimming. So like now that I have my RPM set, then I could start focus on trimming the airplane. And again, I have those buttons mapped here and just use that horizon to trim it off and also keep an eye on your altimeter. The goal with trimming it is just to not be climbing and not be descending. Um, so it does take time and it's very, very slight movements. So if you've been wondering why is it so hard to trim the airplane, it's normal. Uh, as I turn around and head back toward the runway, we're going to do a pretty steep turn. We want to make sure we have some speed in this steep turn is safer, be faster in a turn like that. Now we're headed back toward the runway and we should have a right crosswind on landing. Now typical with tail wheels versus a tricycle gear. With the tricycle gear you can just crab into the wind and then at the very end when you're getting closer to the runway you just use some left rudder and line up. Tail wheel it's a little different and what a lot of people do with the tail wheels is they come in and they get to about stall speed and they do a three-point landing. They land the front wheels and the back wheels together. I want to try to get you to get away from that. That can be really good if you have a really short field and you need to have the least amount of ground roll as possible. Sure, there's certain situations where a three-point landing could, could work better. But when you have a big runway like this, you just come in and start figuring out what the airplane wants to do to stay straight. Right now, we don't need a whole lot. But I am going to do a little bit of ailerons into the wind. I'll probably increase the wind here in a second just to make this a little bit more uh, realistic because I feel like the wind's not strong enough, not really reacting like it should. And then just slowly work its way down. Now, now I just got that right front wheel down. The left one is now down. And then we can just work, work off some speed and let that tail come down. Notice how the tail is not even down yet. And then just pitch up a little bit with our elevator. Didn't use any flaps. And just like that. Nice and smooth. Instead of coming down and doing a three point landing would be like this. I could do probably do another landing on this runway. There we go. So now we're back up in the air. Alright, this is what a lot of people do. They come in. They get it to, I didn't mean to do that. They get it to about stall speed, like right here. And then they just land all three wheels on the ground at once. Um, it's really hard to, to like teach someone tail wheel flying on a simulator. It, you really have to be in the airplane. You really have to feel it. And that's one of the biggest things you're not getting out of the simulator is you're not dealing with real elements. You're not like feeling it, the G's, um, the forces of the wind, feeling how the airplane actually handles. So other than that, it's amazing. Um, awesome way to get your fix of flying and start to get a grasp on this stuff. But also people spend a lot more time than they should looking at instruments. Don't worry about instruments in an airplane like this. Fly the airplane outside the window, stick and rudder flying. You don't need instruments. Um, airspeed is probably your most important instrument. Altitude, the more you fly, you can start to see how high you are. Start to have a pretty good idea of how high you are. Um, airspeed is nice to have, but you should be able to learn th land the airplane without that as well. All right, so we've taken back off. I'm going to do one more and increase the wind here. And as I increase the wind, um, probably going to push us, let's do like 16 knots. So now it's starting to push us off the runway. So we're going to crab into the wind here. There we go. Get a better look at that. 
So that's what crabbing is. You'll see the airplane is pointed one way, but it's moving another. So we're crabbing into that wind, just like you would do in a boat and water. Uh, there's a lot of similarities of flying and being on a boat. All right, so now we're going to turn around, start getting lined up. And you just got to remember, you have a, a huge runway here to play around with. There's no reason to hurry and get the airplane on the ground in a hurry. All right, so now we got a pretty good right crosswind. We should have ailerons into the wind, got our ailerons into the wind, and then some left rudder, opposite rudder. That should keep us pretty coordinated here coming in. Um, as we slow down, though, the wind could actually have more of an effect on us. But we also will be lower to the ground and get into ground effect. And so I just want to keep my speed up here. I don't want to get too slow and go into a three point landing. I'm going to keep my speed up and just slowly work the airplane down right there. Boom. Right tire just hit. Look at that, holding it on one wheel, now two wheels. All right, then work the throttle back. Airplane's gonna wanna go all over the place. And that's why I've got the balls of my feet on the rudder pedals. I don't have my whole foot on the rudder pedals. You just use the balls of your feet, you can make very minor movements with it. Savage Cub just wants to fly. Love this airplane. Um, now we'll just hop in the 152 real quick and do a quick lap with the 152 and the honeycomb yoke. Talk about that for a second and call it a day. I will do some more tailwheel instructional stuff. And if you're on my live stream, um, if you join on the live stream, you can probably get some of that as well. But I want to do some real life and uh, kind of chats while flying a tailwheel and be in a in the tailor craft so i'm planning on doing some of that in real life let's go into dev mode i'm going to go into dev mode turn that on if, if you're not familiar with dev mode that gives you the option to actually select a different aircraft without having to go back to the main menu now i can go to a cessna 152 don't know which one okay this is the aerobatic I'm not going to do the aerobatic i'm just going to do the standard one there we go. Parking brake is on, I'm guessing. Parking brake was not on. Now the parking brake is on. And I'm going to switch to the honeycomb yoke real quick. Let's do that. All I have to do is move this aside. Screw it on, plug it in, good to go. All right, and as you can see, I've got the honeycomb yoke hooked, hooked up now. So let's check out some of these buttons and just hearing them and hitting these buttons and watching them react on here is pretty satisfying. I'm turning off all my lights here. We'll turn the beacon on. We'll turn the landing light on, the nav and the strobe. Uh, master battery, battery. Obviously, if I turn that off, it's going to turn the battery off. And then over here, we've got our mags. So watch this with the key. That's going to want to make the airplane. That's going to want to make the engine turn off. If you click this, it will show and hide the yoke. I've done videos walking through a full 152 VFR flight. So I'm not going to do that right now. I'm specifically just talking peripherals and showing them. Um, oh, I got to screw this down to the desk. Um, so, but if you do want like a full on 152 tutorial, then go check out my videos I did from Sedona to Flagstaff. And then I did one in the 172 from Flagstaff back to Sedona and some IFR. All right. And I'll have to keep making more videos. So let's take off. And for this, again, I'd probably switch the throttle to my right hand if you really wanted to get super realistic with it. Um, I know Honeycomb just also came out with a throttle quadrant, which is very exciting because I'm sure 
it is amazing just based on their yoke and how awesome their yoke is do I have any yeah I have flaps mapped to this as well so I have what I have here on my thumb is I have trim so as I hold this back it's see it's pitching up so that's my trim wheel and then I have my um, flaps on the other button here and then over here on the right side I just have views so as I hit this these two buttons over here I can cycle through views which is really nice I'm a big fan of having a lot of cool views on the simulator that you don't get in real life. All right, and we'll circle back and do a landing. Um, steel shaft. What's impressed me most about the honeycomb yoke is the tension, the realism of the, the tension of how this yoke feels in your hand is super cool. I love that. Um, if I were, starting out simulating and I needed to just get one thing though I'd probably go with the Thrustmaster just because this is gonna be coming this is gonna come with the throttle and that's the thing is if you have the honeycomb yoke and you don't have a throttle um, you really really need a throttle to make this simulator realistic so that is like a really good package deal to get a stick and a throttle and um, you can fly a yoke airplane with a stick. It's fine. You know, some people are like, oh, it's, you're just flying a yoke airplane with a stick. Like, who cares? They all do the same thing. Um, but I understand wanting to have both for the realism. That's just my two cents. I would start with a, com a combo like that. Or you could just jump right into having a yoke and uh, the throttle quadrant if you wanted to get the honeycomb yoke and then also get their new throttle quadrant that would be pretty insane they make some really cool stuff aeronautical engineered okay where's the runway at i just went pretty far away here it is all right now we're on like a left base that's fine we're on a left base for this runway i'm gonna do a nice smooth landing here and then call it a day in donegal Go hit the pub. Uh, monitor instruments. I, I'm, you know, nothing wrong with checking oil pressure, all that stuff. That's great, but fly the airplane outside. And then this joystick here looks to the left, which is cool. The one up here, you can hold it right or hold it left, and I do like that. And then if you flick it up, you come into this landing configuration view, which is really nice because that's giving you more of a like a real life focal length of what you would be seeing this is really neat so i'm just gonna do a little left rudder here that's the difference with the tail wheel is you really you don't need as much ailerons into the wind as much as you just you just do left rudder a lot easier to stay coordinated in a tricycle gear totally different story here There we go. That was a little, little rough. I was a little bit higher than I thought I was. All right, but you know, nice smooth landing for the most part. And this has been a lot of fun. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions about any of this. I hope that you've been enjoying Microsoft Flight Simulator. What a time that we live in. If I had had this stuff, you know, this kind of r realistic yoke and peripherals in 2002 on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2002 it would have blown my mind um, one more thing about a tail wheel in a tricycle gear you can be on the brakes a lot when you land that's fine you don't want to slam on the brakes but you can definitely start hitting the brakes tail wheel you don't want to hit the brakes that thing is just gonna nose right over and you're gonna end up upside down and the air airplanes gonna be totaled so uh, just let the airplane, let the speed bleed off down the runway. And once you get slow enough, you can start to apply some brakes. Remember, keep learning, but also have fun. You know, try not to take this stuff so seriously. Make sure you have some fun. It's good to treat it real. I, I treat it like a simulator and not a game. But uh, 
you know, just keep learning this. You'll keep learning more and more over time. It could take a long time unless you go get your private pilot's license and work for, you know, six months learning everything all at once from an instructor. Um, it could take a long time to learn stuff in the simulator over time. And just if you really want to get into it buy Jeppesen private pilot manual by the book stick and rudder, there's a lot of good material out there, uh, books you can read to learn more about aviation. This Jeppesen private pilot manual I got is, is really good. So check that out. That's got everything, a lot of stuff in there more than you even need to know really. Um, and yeah. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have fun. Fly safe. I will talk to you soon. Brady, out.